Hi, my name is Lydia and um, I just wanted to talk about loyalty in terms of like when we think of dogs, right? Uh, because I think people have different ideas of what loyalty means in the dog world, I'm noticing. Um, and also, I kind of wanted to talk about Siberian Huskies because um, I have thoughts about Siberian Huskies. <laughs> Okay, um, so if you're in Huskies for me, um, they're stunning, gorgeous. Uh, they physically are ideal for me. Like if it just came down to how their fur is and their physical appearance, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 for me. Um, and even growing up for me, I was like the wolf girl in school you know i feel like everybody knows one of these kids growing up that's like obsessed with a certain animal and for me growing up that was a wolf i loved wolves it was wolf everything the arctic everything um and i was obsessed with huskies of course as well i noticed that there's like a, a strong link a link between people who love wolves and people who love huskies even though there are other dog breeds in the world that look more like huskies or sorry that look more like wolves than huskies do um but for some reason wolf people are also husky people i noticed there's like a strong link there um and when you look up wolf totem people like if you look up like wolf spirit animal and a wolf totem the same personalities between those people and like and the people who own Siberian Huskies there's an overlap there there's a strong overlap there it's kind of crazy that I've noticed anyway but um where was I going with that so um when I talk about Siberian or when I talk about Huskies when I use the word Husky just know I'm talking about Siberian Huskies because I, I do realize that there are other types of Huskies out there um i met an alaskan husky recently and she was so precious she was so precious but um anyway i'm not talking about alaskan huskies in this video i'm talking about siberian huskies <laughs> and um they're just uh, a little crazy to me though every siberian husky that i've ever met has been in, in one or two cat one of these two categories. Um, they've either been absolute crazy psychotic maniacs, like you cannot trust these dudes. And they've always got like a crazed look in their eye, no matter what. And it's like, even when you think they're like, oh, they're chill, they're gonna come over, get, you know, you're gonna cuddle with them a little bit. It's like psych. Psych, I'm actually psychotic. Psych, I'm crazy. And you're like, okay, this guy's unhinged and I don't, <laughs> I don't trust him. He's gonna do what he's gonna do. They're either in that camp or they are like total sweeties, like total. But I feel like those are only the girls that I ever see are like that, um, the females. And then the males typically are like psychotic, crazy, like whatever. Um, the girls, they come over and they're like, mm, I'm just a lady. That's it. I don't really mean anything. I don't mean no harm. I'm sweet. And you're like, why, why is it either one or the other? Why? Um, but I also notice no shade, no shade whatsoever, because I, I do think huskies are beautiful. And I appreciate them for who they are. But husky people, from what I've noticed, they feel within their core that huskies are loyal. Now hear me out. I think we have a different view of what loyalty means. I also think that this is due to the fact that husky people tend to also be wolf people. And wolf people are loyal, very loyal. Wolves 
are very loyal to their pack, like to a hardcore degree. And so I think, I think wolf people see huskies as, as kind of like wolves, but like that you can own, um, like wolves, but like dogs. And so they project their want for, a, for that loyalty, that wolf-like loyalty onto their dog. That's just my theory. I don't know. Don't be offended. I'm so sorry if you're offended. Um, I don't mean to offend anybody, but that's what it seems like to me because like, it's like they f defend the idea that their husky is loyal to them to the grave, to the end of the world. They, they're like, they, that my dog was the most loyal dog I could have ever imagined. And I'm like, mm -hmm. are they though? Are they, like, what do you mean by loyalty? I think they just really want that. They like love the idea of something being deathly loyal because they are, as people, deathly loyal. Um, but Huskies, Siberian Huskies, in my experience, are quite possibly the most disloyal dog breed. And I, y'all are probably gonna wanna fight me. All my husky people are gonna wanna fight me, but I, I, I promise I mean that in the, the kindest way. Because the thing is about, about huskies that I have noticed is that they are, they are so passionate about freedom. And that is unique to the husky, okay? Other dogs, they, you know, it's almost a fault of other dogs in my in my mind is that they're they almost don't care about loyal or about um freedom at all like you know take your classic labrador retriever you know um he doesn't care about his own freedom that much you know he cares about human what is human doing what is ball doing and what is human doing at all times and it's like that's why I have such high respect for Huskies, even though they are not for me at all in terms of personality. Um, but they are freedom lovers. Like they, they're, they've got that like independent attitude that's like, what's in it for me? And I just wanna have fun. So like, if you're not willing to like make this, this whole like, training session appealing to me, then whoa, why bother? They're almost like above um, your standard loyalty. You know what I mean? There was above that in a way. So that's at least how I have seen Huskies uh, behave, especially since we all know that Huskies are escape artists, like natural born escape artists. Um, they want to find that freedom. They want to run and find adventure. That's like them to their core. And so it's like, why? Like, I don't know. I, I just think that some Husky people have a hard time accepting that their Huskies aren't loyal and actually value freedom far more than loyalty. But it's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Let's accept it. Let's embrace it. Um, because I think that to its core is what Siberian Huskies are really all about is freedom, adventure, let's have fun, you know? And that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool and pretty unique in terms of the dog space, in terms of dogs. That's a pretty unique characteristic and trait. Um, these dogs can't be trained just by anybody. You know what I mean? A lot of, a lot of the stereotypical loyal breeds, um, you know, they're loyal and they also are extremely obedient, you know, and those sometimes can go hand in hand. Whereas a Husky's like, uh, peace. Like if you're not going to have fun with me, if you're not going to be my buddy and if you're going to try to control me, like peace, bye. Like I'm not here to be controlled, buddy. You know what I mean? Like make it fun for me. Um, and mad respect to that, mad respect to, to the Husky for that. Um, but let's, you know, let's not try to make them what they're not. Let's try to not, not control them and try to put our wants and needs onto the Husky because, you know, you can't control these guys. They're, um, and they might love you. You're their buddy. But yeah, 
You know, their true calling is to be this free spirit. And I love that. Mad respect, mad respect. Um, I do think that like maybe people have also a different understanding of what loyalty means. Because I think some people think that um, like being a guard dog or protective is also loyal. And I just had never thought of it that way until recently. And I'm like, wait, I guess that can be an aspect of loyalty. Um, you know, but I really, that might just even be down to a dog feeling uncomfortable. That might not necessarily be because your dog is feeling loyal to you, but um, more just because they see a threat or something that's encroaching on their, um, their freedom <laughs> like it might come down to just that again you know like encountering a dog that just seems kind of sketchy or a person that seems kind of sketchy might be like an uncomfortability rather than uh I'm so deathly loyal to my owner that I am showing protective signs you know what I mean um like um like these people are these dogs aren't Akitas you know what I mean they're not Akitas they're very different. Um, yeah. But I do respect the Siberian Husky a lot. Um, and I also think likewise, they are very similar to their owners. A lot of their owners, it's like, they're very loyal, but um, they also love their freedom. And they're like, you can't cage me, mm-mm, <laughs> you know? Um, I think there is something energetically similar across the board with um, husky owners and that is like this like playful energy I've never met like an overly serious husky owner y'all you know what I mean like they always kind of have like this like fun loving playful vibe about them which is like kind of matches their dog am I right um anyway what else what else was I going to say about that um huskies are not for me and this is not me dragging them because again like I was obsessed with them as a kid and then as I grew up just a little bit I was also obsessed with Pomeranians and you know I have a Pomeranian right now but um I was obsessed with Pomeranians and Huskies and that kind of over overlapped and I didn't even know this existed at the time and I don't even know if it really did. It certainly wasn't popular, but as a kid, I was like, I probably would have gone feral for a Pomsky. Luckily, I didn't know about one. And, <laughs> but I am kind of like, I'm also glad I didn't know about Alaskan Kleekai's at the time because then I would have gone absolutely feral and begged my mom nonstop for one because they are, I mean, kind of perfect for a person who wants a smaller husky or a pomsky. Anytime somebody says that they want a pomsky, I immediately um, send them stuff about the Alaskan Klikai because it's like, you don't need to like mix two breeds together, you know, um, which can just result in like a kind of an all over the place sort of a temperament when there already is a breed called the Alaskan Klikai that is kind of ideal for the people who want a Pomsky. It's kind of crazy, but I would have gone absolutely feral for them if I would have known about that as a kid. Luckily, luckily I didn't know about that because um, I don't think it would have fit my lifestyle as like um, a 12 year old, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I would have begged my mom for it every day until maybe she cracked. I don't know, she probably never would have, but um, I would have begged her. <laughs> and my poor Bassa Hound at the time, our poor Bassa Hound growing up would have been like, this is crazy. Um, I didn't ask for this energy at all. Um, yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> and I don't know, I think there's also subtle differences that you can tell between a dog that is protecting out of true loyalty versus a dog that is protecting out of like instinct or 
um, uncomfortability or resource guarding even. You know what I mean? Um, so it's hard to say whether like why some huskies might be like showing protective signs, like why that might be. Because I don't think by nature they're really supposed to be these like protectors, you know? Um, of course, I think just about any dog can be provoked to be this protector, almost any dog. Especially if it's raised a certain way or something triggers it, you know? But um, it's hard to say without like viewing a dog why that would be. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I don't think Siberian Huskies are known for being loyal. Um, independent, I would totally say yes about that. And what else? Um, <laughs> I just had something that I was going to say and now I completely forgot it. Just hold on a second. Oh, I remember. I was going to get into why I personally um, wouldn't want a Siberian Husky or why they're not right for me, even though aspects of them are. Um, for example, their energy level, except for some of them are absolutely crazy, but um, their energy level seems to be pretty good. Um, like not too crazy if you're a person who loves to hike and stuff, which I do. And their fur, their fur texture, dense fur coat, perfect and ideal for harsh winters and winter hiking and stuff. And I love that. I love the, the double coat, um, double coated breeds with the, I think they're called guard hairs, the outside hairs that are, um, um, they blow their coat rather than needing like extensive grooming. Um, all ideal for me. Uh, I do tend to like like the more spitzy, primitive, um, independent minded breeds like that. So like all of that seems like on paper they would be great for me. Uh, their size is like ideal. I know they can vary a lot in size, but their general medium size is perfect for me. Um, I don't know if people call, consider their size like a large size dog. Like, do you consider a golden retriever size dog a large dog? I don't know. Um, maybe they do. Maybe people do consider that a large dog because um, that is the general size that I like of a dog. But, um, <sighs> their personality is just really not for me. And I'm not really into dogs that are very vocal. And, um, I don't know. I don't really care for their, their adventure seeking. You know what I mean? Like, what's in it for me and make this fun for me? You know, that, that mindset is less for me. I like more of like the Chow Chow and the Akita mindset, the more um, like a lot of the Asian dog breeds have sort of a what's in it for me mindset, but it's more like make this make sense, make this make logical sense. And I think for Huskies, it's less about what makes logical sense. It's like, make this fun for me. Why would I even care about what you're displaying in front of me right now? Like. Make me care, make me want to do this. Um, I don't know, grab my favorite treat or make this adventurous, like something, like why, you know, it's more like that. And I think that's awesome. Um, I think my mind is just a little bit too serious for that. Like, um, I don't know. <laughs> like I think uh, Husky people have sort of a lightheartedness um, about themselves like they can be very serious when they want to be but there's like a lightheartedness when it comes to their dogs and um, I tend to be kind of serious when it comes to dogs and my mindset about training them and stuff so there's that um, I also it's funny because I've had this thought before and um, I heard somebody else say this and I was like um, I'm so glad somebody else in the world sees this and I'm not alone but tell me if you see this too but 
somebody, one of my friends, um, had said that Shiba Inu are like smaller huskies, <laughs> essentially. And I was like, I see it. I see it and I agree in a lot of ways. Um, cause they're like more vocal. Um, I would say that they're like a little less hearted than I've seen Siberian Huskies. They're like a little bit more serious. Um, like and more in a spitz way, if that makes sense, like a serious and a spitz way. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's like, what's in it for me? And like, oh, you think you can catch me? <laughs> Just try it. Like, I don't know, like that total energy and the the vocalness and the like I will freak out on you when you touch my feet um <laughs> of course not all Siberian Huskies or Shiba Inu are like that but um just generally I was like yeah the vibe the energy of a Shiba Inu is kind of similar to a Husky a Siberian Husky like why is that I don't know, but I love it. Like, I, I love that comparison. And, um, yeah. Although, I will say that, like, I feel like the people who own Siberian Huskies are likely to also own Shiba Inu, but they shouldn't. And my reasoning for that is because Shiba Inu are just a little bit more serious than Siberian Huskies, and, like, they're just, to me, Shiba Inu are this dog that you should not be messing with, that, but everybody messes with them. It's always like the worst owners for Shiba Inu own Shiba Inu. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But I also have an issue in general with um, Shiba Inu owners. <laughs> like most who own Shiba Inu, I'm just like, they drive me nuts. That could be a whole other freaking video because I... I think that's one of my biggest pet peeves in life is just people who own Shiba Inu. <laughs> um, and it's like, I revere them so deeply because they are a part of the Nihon Ken and I just love the Nihon Ken, like as a whole, I love all of the six native Japanese dog breeds there. They just have a special place in my heart. But um, the people who own Shiba Inu, like, for the most part they piss me off but it's whatever <laughs> it's whatever um that's for a different video i think it's not for this one um but husky owners you know husky owners i don't know just embrace that your dog isn't loyal okay um and that's all right that's all right they might love you that doesn't mean they don't love you they just, they have a free spirit. Let's embrace the Siberian Husky's free spirit. Uh, that being said, I don't think I've ever met a well-bred Siberian Husky in real life. And that might be contributing to all this, maybe. <laughs> um, I've met a lot of Siberian Huskies in my day, but I've just, I mean, I'm not in spaces where, where I would be around well-bred Siberian Huskies, you know? Um, but I would love to meet one and whenever I've seen photos of them online, I'm always like, wow, that is a stunning dog. That is very stunning. Um, it's also wild how like, how different Siberian Huskies can look. Um, especially non-well-bred ones, like poorly bred ones, I guess you could say, or just purebred, um, not well-bred ones. It's like, they look so vastly different across the board. You know what I mean? I saw one just the other day that was very tiny. It was like a, the runt of its litter and it was it was really cute. I will give it that. Um, it was just so tiny and she was, she was precious. She was one of those sweet ones, you know what I mean? Um, but that was interesting. That was very interesting to meet such a small one. Um, yeah. <laughs> and if you're interested in a tiny Siberian Husky. Look into Alaskan Kleekai. You might love them. You might love them. Um, I will say they are stunning. Alaskan Kleekai. Ooh, they're gorgeous. Gorgeous. Every time I see one, I'm like, do I? 
do I watch an Alaskan Klee guy? And I'm like, I don't, I don't, because it just doesn't match me as a person. Um, cut to me in 10 years having an Alaskan Klee guy. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Um, but they're stunning, they're stunning, and they come in different sizes. So if you like really mini, you can have a really mini one, but then they can become, you, you can get some that are, are bigger too. So that's really cool. Um, anyway, those are just some of my thoughts about the Siberian Husky. Um, stunning, stunning. But I think overall not for me. 